President Trump made an historic decision yesterday to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Here was his historic announcement. Roll it, Brittany. While previous presidents have made this a major campaign promise, they failed to deliver. Today, I am delivering. Consistent with the Jerusalem Embassy Act, I am also directing the State Department to begin preparation to move the American Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And in the wake of this decision, riots are erupting all over the West Bank and Gaza, in Palestinian refugee camps, in Turkey, in Ankara, in Istanbul. They are now vowing days of rage against the Trump decision, against Israel, and against America. In fact, leaders of the Palestinians have said the peace process is now dead. Others have now said this is the beginning of a holy war against America. Turkish uh, leader, the Islamist dictator Erdogan has said for Muslims all over the world, Trump has now crossed our red line. And so now the Muslim world is exploding in anger, fury, and hostility against Trump. In fact, they're burning him in effigy, in riot after riot. Uh, the Palestinians are calling for days of strikes uh, all across the West Bank and Gaza. And now Erdogan is going to be meeting with Muslim leaders. They're convening a huge council of Muslim leaders to discuss what the Muslim world's reaction will be, both to Israel and to America and to Trump in particular. As all of this is going on, Pres uh, Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu went on Israeli television, primetime address, and said this is one of the greatest acts ever done on behalf of the state and people of Israel. It is a significant policy shift. And as Trump pointed out, going all the way back to Clinton, American presidents have promised to remove the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. They talked the talk. The president, however, has walked the walk. And so the question is this. Did Trump make the right move? Because after he announced his decision, it has been condemned. Condemned by the United Nations, condemned by the entire Muslim world, condemned by the liberal mainstream media, and condemned even by Pope Francis himself. Okay, Red Francis doesn't like the decision. And so even the Pope in a public address almost unprecedented, went out of his way to say that the status quo must be maintained, the, the, Trump should backtrack and reverse his decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. To me, this is an absolute disgrace. I think the Pope has disgraced himself, the media is disgracing itself, the UN is disgracing itself, and frankly, the Muslims are proving my point once again. Let's run down the arguments. Number one, and to me the obvious point, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. It is. So all Trump did was recognize the reality of the situation in Israel. That to me is point number one. Point number two, what peace process? The Pope is going on about, oh, the peace process is now going to be wrecked irretrievably. The media is saying, oh, the peace process is now dead forever. Trump killed the peace process. What peace process? There hasn't been a peace process since Bush. Because deep down, the Palestinians don't want peace. They've never wanted peace. And here we get to the heart of the matter. Why is the Muslim world exploding at Trump for his decision to recognize the facts on the ground? 
which is that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. It is. And all he's going to do is move the embassy. It's going to take several years from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. They're going to have to construct a new embassy, get new staff, eventually transfer them over. It's going to take a couple of years. But essentially, all he's doing is, is recognizing the reality of what is going on in Israel. You know, we wouldn't say it's a big deal if Trump recognized, I don't know, Berlin as the capital of Germany or Paris as the capital of France, or Ottawa as the capital of Canada. However, it is a big deal for the Muslim world. Because as the leader of Hamas openly said yesterday, Jerusalem is, quote, Islamic Arab land. For the Muslims, they claim all of Jerusalem. In fact, they claim all of Israel. And so for Hamas, for the Palestinian leadership, for Hezbollah, for the Iranian mullahs, for uh, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who dreams of resurrecting another Ottoman Empire, for them, Jerusalem is not Jewish land or Christian land, it is Muslim land. And so they're hiding behind this fig leaf. Oh, he's preempting the final status negotiations because the status of East Jerusalem, which is heavily Arab, that should be involved in a the capital of a future Palestinian state. Well, number one, if the Israelis agree to detach East Jerusalem uh, in a final negotiations with the Palestinians for a Palestinian state, even recognizing Jerusalem doesn't preempt it. The Jews can still do it. The Israeli leadership can still do it. But there's a deeper point. They don't just want East Jerusalem because access to the Muslim holy sites will be guaranteed, as it is for Christian holy sites, and as it is for the Wailing Wall, the Jewish holy site. So it's not about access to holy sites. It's about the Muslims claiming Jerusalem as their own. And the reason why they claim it as their own is because in the Muslim world, and here we get to the heart of the matter, they have never stopped going on about the Crusades. For them, the Crusades, that was yesterday. Most of us don't even know about the Crusades here in the West, here in America especially. We're incredibly, grossly ignorant about the Crusades. We don't even know what they were, never mind when it happened, what the reasons were, uh, how long it lasted, what the underlying causes were. In the Muslim world, it's the exact opposite. The moment the children are put in kindergarten, they're taught about the Crusades. They're indoctrinated about the Crusades. It's in their schools, it's in their universities, it's in their movies, it's in television, it's in their literature. It doesn't end. It's non-stop, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. The Crusades, the Crusades, the Crusades. In fact, if you, don't take my word for it, look at Osama bin Laden. Look at his literature. Look at stuff that he's written. Look at Al-Qaeda. Look at ISIS. Look at Saudi Arabia. Look at Iran. Look at Turkey. Look what they come out in state-run media. They always refer to Israel and America as the Zionist Christian Crusaders. When we attacked Iraq and deposed Saddam Hussein, Hussein went on saying, the Zionist Christian Crusaders are coming. Now, people in the American military think, ah, they're just saying that to mean America. It's their way of saying America. It's more than that. It's their way of saying the Crusaders. In other words, for them, we are the modern-day Crusaders. Israel is the modern-day Crusaders. Europe is the modern-day Crusaders. And so for them, their historic defeat at the hands of the Crusaders is something that must be avenged. Because they want Jerusalem to be Muslim again. When the state of Israel was founded, 
Jerusalem became part of Israel. And for the Muslims, this was a huge crime and a huge reversal of their historic victory. They had, cl they had retaken Jerusalem from the Christians over 800 years ago. They want it back. It's also why uh, Islamists all over the Middle East claim Spain. They claim Portugal. They claim France. They claim Italy. They claim Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia, Romania, Bulgaria, Austria, chunks of Germany. Why? Not for, for the sake of claiming it. Because those were lands that were once held by invading Muslim armies. And so for them, they were part of the Crusades. They were once Muslim territories and must be returned to the Islamic Caliphate. In fact, Erdogan who's now becoming a key player in this, the dictator of Turkey, has openly said, we are now allowing millions of migrants to pour into Europe. What our armies could not do, our demographics will now do. Immigration will do. Meaning, we will retake Europe like we were unable to do under the Ottoman Empire. They want Greece. That's why they're pouring so many Muslim migrants into Greece. They want huge chunks of Europe to become part of the Islamic Caliphate again. For them, it is the clash of civilizations. And so, for them, Jerusalem is a Muslim holy city. It is after Mecca and Medina in the Muslim world, their most sacred city. So when Trump recognized the uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, undivided, the eternal capital of Israel, what the Muslims see is this, it will be in the hands of the West forever. It will be in the hands of Christians and Jews forever. And this we cannot allow, because we will eventually win the battle that began with the Crusades. And so my answer to the Pope, to the UN, to the liberal media, and to the Muslim world is very simple. You want a clash of civilizations? You got it. We didn't ask for it. You did. Israel is part of the West. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. We have the right to recognize the capital of Israel. The, crusade, the Crusades are over. We won, you lost. Jerusalem will remain part of the West. And it will remain part of Israel as long as the Jewish people exist. It is now time to defend Western civilization itself. President Trump has done it. He's not Neville Chamberlain. He's Winston Churchill. And it's about time he put the Palestinians and the Muslim world on notice. Your days of kicking the Jews and the Christians around are over. They're over. Jerusalem now, Jerusalem forever.